evening everyone for anyone watching on replay you'll find all the links of everything i talk about every group i talk about in the description and please go and join them go and subscribe to them because they're really really good youtubers Right. Yesterday, I was trying to plan and we was watching the Pascal show. I sort of ended it just as the questions was coming into it when the he was asking the questions from the uh, chat. So last night after I finished the live. And I'd done everything I had to do. I thought, well, I'll just finish watching the last of it. Right. See what they've got to say in questions. And I was coming up with some flipping good questions. Right. Like, one said, have you checked? Like, the gig asked if he's checked any of these hospitals where children with autism can go and things like that. And uh, he said he's got his PIs on that. <coughs> <coughs> right? Because if they had put him into some sort of hospital or care centre for people with autism, then they are breaking the law by holding him there. Because his dad didn't give him permission to. And they have to have permission of both the bio mother and bio father to do that so he's got his pi's on to that and then someone said what was it um have you checked your medical insurance to see if any claims have been made on it because if he is in some sort of a care place, care centre, it's going to be paid through their medical. If he is being treated somewhere, it's going to be, it's going to come through their medical. Anyway, and all of a sudden he grabs this book of his, he starts writing it down, and uh, that was one of the, one, you no, know, he said in one interview, you're not asking the right questions. That was one of the right questions to be asking. Right? And um, some have mentioned today, I've read some places on Facebook pages, he should get himself a lawyer. Right? No, that isn't doing anything wrong. It's just that the lawyer can help him through all this mess right and to get a lawyer for his son as well right so then the lawyer will speak for his son and not the mother But I don't know, I don't know what to think. Um, I've got the Seth Rogers cash app up in the chat. So if anyone would like to help by doing that, sending them some money that way, please feel free to. I will put the link in for the uh, GoFundMe. and um so you can always help that way it's just that they, with these go from me they take a big quite a big percentage out of it so you think he's got twenty thousand? he hasn't he hasn't because they're going to take their cut out of it so 
if you want to help him directly, do it to the cash app that's in the uh, chat. Um, what else? If anyone has any information, please don't go to YouTube or Facebook. Go to the Sumner County Sheriff's Department or the TBI. Right? Before going on to any Facebook page or YouTube page. And the numbers are in the description. Now, we haven't had no major uh, new info put out today. There's been searches going on. And we're going to show you one of those searches. It's not for uh, divers. I'll tell you something, I wouldn't like to be them. Because they're in this pond, this pond thing. And it's just mud. Right? So when they're under the water, they're at least they're going to have to feel with their hand because they won't be able to see nothing. They're literally having to feel with their hands, as you can imagine. But there's three of them in this river, in this pond or lake or whatever today three divers and i didn't watch it all i missed it i'm coming at again i'm coming at the end of the live so about 10 minutes later i went back and i was watching it again for the beginning so i was watching little clips of it not a lot but i'm, I'm going to show you a bit of it today tonight just to show you what they are what these divers are working with, right? Now, while they were there as well, they knew they could hear um, a drone above them. They don't know who the drone was, the drone it was. It may have been a police drone, just keeping an eye on them. You know what I mean? I don't know, and they don't know either. But can we say hi in the chat? Don't sit in the bushes. Um, what else? So we're going to have a look at the Pascal show, the end bit with the questions and things like that. Right? And you can hear yourself some of the questions that are being asked. And then there's one by JLR, which sort of caught my attention. And I'll put that link in the description. I haven't got around to putting that link in the description yet. But it sort of caught my attention because it was about a possible um, sighting. And this person reported it to TBI or the sheriff's department, whoever. But she don't know if anyone got back to them. No one got back to her. So she let JLR and Seth know. So they went the day after she reported it, right, to this place. And they said, and said, have you had any law enforcement to come here? inquiring about Sebastian Rogers, wanting to see any footage, and they said no. Now this is like two weeks ago, going back two weeks. So today it's gone back again. And they said no. But then while he's outside, by the roadside, talking, he wasn't filming anything, he was just talking about it. I was seeing these two people walking across towards him. So he puts his camera down and goes out of a earshot of the camera. So you couldn't hear what they're saying. But apparently, they didn't have any information they could give them. So, have the police been and checked on that? You'll hear more about it when I show you the video. And I'm thinking if they haven't, they said in their interviews, any tip we will be following up on 
So if they're not following up on these tips, what are they doing? You know what I mean? And public attention will turn against them if they don't start pulling their thumb out the backside. Right, okay, they just did a massive two day search again. Brilliant. Right? And they covered a lot of land again. But why do that search there? Someone said, could it be because of the glasses that were found? No, because where they did the searching was nowhere near where the glasses were found. Nowhere near. They were searching. If you look on their maps, Google Maps, and you come out of their road, down to the main road, and you've got all that trees and forest, that's where they were searching there. So what made them go back? Had they not been there before? Had they not been searching there? And if so, what made them go back there again? Because I'm sorry, you're not going to put on a big show of support with searches and everything. Just because you're covering your back. You're not. It costs too much money. It costs too much money to do that. So they must have had a teapot or something. Right, and to my knowledge as well, people have been asking, have they searched the landfill? Now, they have searched one landfill in Kentucky, but that landfill is where the construction site take all their them big skips. They take all their skips there, right? But they haven't, to my knowledge, unless they've done it without anyone knowing, to my knowledge, they've not done a search of the landfill where everyday rubbish is is put. Right? And they tried to fob us up by saying, well, they had a tip that just the men working on the refuge on the beans that day felt that their beans was that little bit heavy. You was that look the wrong skip for that huh? For everyday refuge, it's not in Kentucky, it's somewhere else. So why did they say that about the just being made, the the skip me, saying that about the bin when they're searching in Kentucky, when Kentucky landfill has got nothing to do with pardon me, with everyday rubbish. So, I don't know if they searched for other landfill. be interesting to know. And I just wish, you know, when they have these police uh, press releases, I wish some of these reporters would ask these questions. Uh, have you done a search on the landfill in such and such, where, all the, where their daily rubbish, weekly rubbish go to? Don't hear myself. Hi, MG. I'm okay. Still a bit full of the cold. How are you? How's your mum? So, I wish they'd ask these questions because it's so annoying now. Right? And then you've got people like United Cage and Navy saying they do never own searches. Where? Where are you doing your searches? Why are you so secretive about your searches? Because you're not doing any searches. Right? We've had uh, two groups out there this weekend. One is the NARC uh, divers, which we'll be watching a bit of it later. And the other one was underwater recovery something. Can't remember. And they work together, both teams work together. But one has got the dog as well, he's got a dog so he can also do land searches. And his dog was there at the river at that 
พังสิจายแต่ว่าในสัปดาห์ของเวลาหมดอีกอันฟรีสบุ๊กอาจารย์ยิ่งเป็นมนุษย์ยิ่งสิ่งดีทีเออลอยจากเอ่อใจอีกจนทวีอีกพวกทีวีเจอใจใจ and the first one is the one root home from the Texas barbecue whatever and the other one is the second root home and he's got a third one he's going to be putting out which is another route which she could possibly take <coughs> and um but any other route she takes after these is means she's going right out of her way to go to these take these routes apart from these three routes <coughs> because People are now looking at the fact that he didn't go home, right? And I, I, I was when I was watching that Pascal show last night, he gave so much information out. He was talking about how Sebastian said to his dad, "I don't think my mum and Chris like me." <laughs> yeah, there's a big red flag, Seth. But you see, Seth, and he said, "Why did you say that?" And he said, "They're like all shouting at me and all this." So Seth just said, "Look, hanging there, hanging. At the end of May, you'll be here. You'll be away from all that. Just hanging, you'll be fine, right?" I bet Chris could kick himself now for saying things like that. Uh, Seth, sorry, could kick himself for saying things like that. But you see, it's no use Seth going back to his wife. Seth, well, Sebastian's telling me you're always shouting at him. You and Chris are always shouting at him, and he doesn't want to come home because it'll only make it worse for Sebastian. Because once the dad leaves, they're going to have a go at Sebastian again. That lad couldn't do right for wrong. And I think when that child services woman came out and spoke to him, if she said what she did say to him, if that is true what she said to him, then she should be sacked. Because because of that, he wouldn't tell his dad. Because he's probably thought, well, I've told the teacher, they've come out, but they're they're, they're telling me if I'm telling him all lies, I can get into trouble. So, what's the point in me saying anything anymore? No one believes me, and that's why he didn't tell his dad. Because he, he just got in his head that no one believes him. His dad would have believed him. If he told his dad, look, they used to, but Chris has been using a belt on me, and all he's got. Seth would have done something. You know what I mean? But because he was just coming out with God, oh, well, I'm always shouting at me and telling me off. And you're just thinking, you know what? You've only got a couple of more months. Stick with it. And at the end of May, in the break up for the summer holidays, you'll be gone. You'll be out of there. So... I don't know what everyone's views are on this. Are you pro Kate and Chris? Are you pro Seth? Or you're not taking sides? I did say at the very beginning, I didn't want to take, I would not be taking sides. I wanted to stay neutral. 
right? So we could focus on Sebastian. But when that mother and stepfather did that first interview, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Right? Now, I've got some Uh, which was sent to me. And I think this is disgusting. Right. Right, show it now. This is sent to me. Right, it's from my Facebook. Uh, from mysterious disappearances of this Sebastian Rogers, right? Someone posted this. I just watched a members only interview with Terry Lee on YouTube, in which Proudfoot stated that Sebastian liked to pee and defecate in his pants. Good work. Good work there. Again, nothing positive comes out of their mouths. Nothing good ever comes out of their mouths about Sebastian. And that's what spoiled my blood. All right, so, where's that that I had sent me? And then, oh yeah, I'm going to go, I'll actually go on to that page, because it is a good page to go on. If you're not a member, if you're not following this page, not following, please do, right? Um, see, someone's just gone to the one who gave the tip to JLR. Well, this tip was reported to law enforcement. But no one got back to this woman to say they was acting on it or checking up on it. So she sent it to JLR and I think Seth. Oh, he showed Seth. So he went there the day after, you know what I mean? Just to see if the police had been there and no police had been there. So he thought, okay, so he left it a while. He's gone back two, three weeks later. And for, for to his understanding, no law enforcement have been there. So he's got there, he's got the information. See, if they had put him in to adolescence for assessment, anywhere into any care facility that care facility are breaking the law because his father has not given permission his mother has maybe but his father hasn't i love it like i put these pictures in of a prison cell right and then it asked them at last, to whom it may concern, we've been waiting for you. Remember, 
first to talk is first to walk. If not, this this is what you'll you will call home for a very long time. If you don't want this to be your reality, and trust me, this is where you're heading, then do the right thing and call the TBI. What's happened is done. Now it's up to you to make the right decision before the hammer falls and the steel bars welcome you home. Trip. Trip. See, a lot of people are still saying uh, it's probably got covered at the house by someone. You know what I mean? It's not happening. It is not happening. Doc still would have got his scent. Being with shoes, shoes on, socks on, or no shoes or socks on. He would have left a scent. But there is no scent of Sebastian anywhere and i'll say that again anywhere around the property right But I think I took a question, right? Being as Sebastian's phone was back at home, did he take it with him when he went to the Texas Roadhouse? Or did he leave it at home? You know what I mean? And people are wanting to know the items of clothing that he was wearing that night at the Texas Roadhouse. Have they been accounted for back at the house? It's got him. Maybe something happened in the car on the way home, and Mum got mad at him and booted him out, and got and he got lost. Right. But I'm sure there'd be other cars around by that time. Someone would have seen him. And JR said a good point. If the police have not checked these areas from the Texas Roadhouse, these routes, does that mean he got home? Does that mean he actually got home? Have they got proof that he actually got home that night? Because I don't believe a word that comes out of that mother's mouth. You know what I mean? Because I know, as I said, my grandsons, both my grandsons, right? And to be honest with me, my granddaughter as well. When that we go out for a meal, right? My grandson will have his tablet with him, or if he hasn't got his tablet, he'll have my phone or his mum's phone or his dad's phone or his other grand's phone, and he'll sit and watch that while he's having his dinner, right? And that's the same with my other grandson. He has a phone, he has his mum or dad's phone or his tablet. If they go out anywhere like for a meal. Because their attention span is not long. Uh, even when they're watching something on a phone or whatever, it's not that long. They get bored.
time. But there's so much information on here. But then again, because of no information coming out from the police, as usual, we don't know if they're doing the job or if they're just sitting there with the thumbs up the backside. Because the police aren't telling us nothing. Like, you think of that uh, Riley Stray? When he went missing, the police, you know, like was in Nashville, right? The police released video of him walking down the street, all the way down this road. Right? They tracked his route all the way down. They haven't released one video, not even the video of the mother and Sebastian walking out the road, Texas Roadhouse. But I'll tell you something, a lot of people have also been talking about that flood, right? If you watch the first interview, if you go back and watch that first interview they did, and she said, she just shouting through to him, no, sorry, she didn't even say that, she said, you went to bed at nine o'clock, right, never heard of him all night then, went into his room at 6am, he wasn't there. And then people's going, but didn't you check on him before you went to bed? Didn't you check on him? Right? He's on medication, you should check on him to make sure he's okay. Anyway, so, in another interview then, she said, I'm sitting here on the sofa and I heard, I heard a, a thud. And I shouted through to him, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you better pack it in and get to sleep. Right? So people go, oh, John, you heard your thought, and you didn't go and check on him. So then, in the other interview, she did, she went, she, I heard your thought, and I shouted to him, Bubba, have you fallen out of bed? And he, he replied, and we said, no, ma'am. And she so said, well, whatever you're doing, you better stop and go to sleep, right? So she then made out she had a conversation with him. And I thought, oh, darling, this should have all been coming out at the beginning. Not two, three weeks down the road. So every interview she did, she added to it. So like when they did that first interview, they never mentioned his name. And I said, you watch that next interview, they are mentioning his name. And they did. Because what they are doing, they are watching these lies. They watch all these Facebook pages. Right? They see what's being said. And then they're incorporating what's being said into their storyline. Someone else did that, if you if you remember, Don Wells and Candice. They were watching and listening to everything everyone was saying and incorporated what we were saying into their storyline. See, that's something else. Now, if he's going off walking, right? Uh, why haven't I found his flashlight? You're telling me he's still got hold of his flashlight. And the batteries and them things don't last forever. <coughs> oh no. 
Can everyone see this? Just got an amber alert here in WA. I don't know what that stands for, what state that stands for. WA Sky, 10.05 am, less than 30 minutes ago. WSP, WA Sky Control. Teddy Templeton, four years old, 40 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, says, says clothing can rule. What? No clothes. Suspect, Shannon Michelle Isabel, 39 years old, 5 foot 2, 125 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes, clothing unknown. Bremerton, West, whatever, just a few miles from me. Blue clear spectrum sedan. Anyone here, keep a lookout for this little one. Oh no. So he's with someone. So he's obviously being abducted by this person. He could be his mother, we don't know. I'll find more out about that. Actually, we can find out. Let's see if it's on here. Oh. Let's see if it's on here. Can you see if you're over? Let's just see if it's on. Would it, would it, no, it wouldn't be on that, would it? No, it wouldn't be on that. No. See, the last one by Tennessee TBI was on the 13th of March. They haven't put anything up. And I came into the investigation with some of Wells quite late. I think it was, was it this, coming up to the second year? She, just before the two years mark that she'd been missing. And um, I'm getting the same vibes that I got there. I'm getting the same vibes with this case, with Sebastian, right, that I got with Summer. Especially when it comes to TBI. Now, we know Summer Wells was poorly treated. She'd never been to a dentist. She, she wasn't taken to the doctors regular because her three brothers was never took to the dentist or to the doctors. They know that because when they took the three brothers off of after summer, summer went missing, they had to get treatment for some skin disorders and things like that. Right? Now that's neglect. Right, and we know um, there's there's physical abuse as well. You know there was. So anyway, let me have a look now. Go back to my face. Everything I want is on my Facebook page, so I'll just get off my Facebook page. Right, let's get this sharing again. <laughs> so, let's have a look. Okay, we're going to. Has anyone been keeping up with the Elijah Vu? Okay, the missing four year old. Not been found yet. He's been missing, he went missing about a week before Sebastian did. Oh, yeah. What I want to do, I want to pull this one up. Because I'm going to go to Union of the End.
I think it's on by half. Yours, justice for Sebastian. So, yeah, I understand that you the the team there online, correct? Can they? Oh, no. was catch app. Show him some love. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now, I'd like to ask this uh, question from Angela Hill. Okay, sure. He says, "How does he know Chris got tired of it, and not mom?" Because. The last time I heard anything mentioned about it, Chris made a point of stating that his mom was letting him wear underwear again and he had an accident. And Chris was like, so you put your mom under the bus when you did that. So that kind of tells me. Yeah. I was willing to give him a chance. Yeah. Uh, I'm done. I'm going to stop it. No, let me stop this minute. Yeah, it, it, you know, this is all. Right, you know, let's talk about the pull ups that he went. I thought it was just on the education. Yeah? No, 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 no. Chris would not have him wear any boxes or anything like that. He always had him in them pull ups. Always. Why? Why? If this chap, this lad has regressed back to such a position in his life where he won't go to the toilet and things like that, what has happened? What's happened for him to do that? He's scared to. He's scared to go. You know what I mean? So, but Chris will not let him have any underwear. Oh, uh, uh, Hold on, I'm going to put it back in a little bit more. You know, as much as we have been covering this. Doing this. I'm about, I'm farther outside of what they're doing than Chris and Katie are. Interesting that you say it that way. Is Chris or the Proudfoots or the Bauer Sox connected to law enforcement in Hendersonville, Tennessee at all? I, Say that again. I have no idea. I have no idea. Sorry, I was drinking more water, so you won't yell at me later. <laughs> Hydrate, baby. Hydrate. But I am quite <laughs> curious about that because, I mean, I'll say it. I don't care. It is a little bit odd that all this is has gone, has transpired. We have not found this young man whatsoever. We had a rescue team coming in. They left because of, well, left for five seconds because... And apparently they have come back. Katie has come back to some entity. No, they, the no, they has haven't. come back in the, in, to help search. There's still people out here volunteering, trying to find your son, yet you still have volunteers getting followed by random suspicious cars and flyers being torn down in this small town. To me... It seems a little bit odd. Then you also have law enforcement out here on. I will state. I'm sitting here and we've got high wind. I can hear the wind here. So I might be having trouble with my internet. So if you lose me, don't go anywhere. Stay where you are. I'll be straight back. If you lose me. press conference basically saying hey you know everything that we have everything's been out uh, you know ruled out as far as foul play so on and so forth so they're just telling us that your son just got up and walked out the house nope. 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 without nope. shoes on nope. nope you gotta stop for a minute and use Go your ahead. imagination he got up and he flew out of the house 
fucked up his scent. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. I'm sorry if you didn't catch the sarcasm in that. Oh, that was sarcasm yeah. as a mug. That you, <laughs> <laughs> you laid it on thick, baby. But that's the thing that doesn't make any sense. No, that's good, Seth. Because I can swear the an alien ship come up above your house, above their house, and zoom zapped him up. It zapped him up out the bedroom. Because there's no sign of him anywhere outside that house. No sign. That's the part that doesn't make any sense. So this kid suddenly has David David Copperfield, oh David God. Blaine skills. Yeah, no, he he has. Jedi powers now. Bang. You know, Star Wars. Right. Using the force. He Able is to... he is now a master. He he is above it. Levitate himself to wherever he's going. Yep. Aliens have cut him up. Unbelievable. That's the why that's the reason why I'm looking at this and I'm side eyeing all this and I'm going, okay. Is there their connection with law enforcement, with the proud foots, or the bow, anything of that sort. And of course, but I got to ask the guy, all right, I know there's some people that are going to feel some type of way about that, but I don't care because this does not make any sense, y'all. None of it's this makes any sense. Journalism. Say that again. Well, free journalism. It is free journalism. I love you being know? a free man. It's a beautiful thing. All day. Which all is back. Day. Back to the Second Amendment. And all it takes is a good man to make sure this stays there. Absolutely. Well, trust me, I'm gonna keep it holding. I'm gonna keep holding here. Okay. All right. Trust and believe. Now, I understand that you're about to you're going to be doing a polygraph test. Is that true? Yeah, Nancy Grace asked if I would do one. I told her yes. Because I know I understand that there's a lot of people out here that are speculating that maybe you're the one hiding Sebastian out here in the Yeah. Yeah. He's on medication at the moment that his doctor's gave him for his shoulder. Right? So, will he be able to do the polygraph with that medication? I don't know. These screeds. So, which I, I think is... in the streets. Right. You know, people want to come search my house. Well, you can kiss my ass. I walk around my house all day. If the law enforcement wants to come and search my house again, they can make my son's bed this time when they leave. Because they definitely didn't make it when they left. Okay, he said what he said, y'all. You heard that? He said what he, he said. said. Okay? I got a couple uh, questions here I want to bring here, okay? So S-Dubs just asked, uh, was he reported? Uh, did he have any consequences? And I think th I think this is, has, has to do with um, the... SA that happened to Sebastian. No, he was okay. reported because KD called CPS, but because he's under the age of 13, nothing happened. Welcome to California stupidity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Amanda, uh, why did it matter if Sebastian was around his daughter when he doesn't live or he doesn't have his daughter? That's actually a good question too. So, that is a question. So every single time that Faith was around, he just kept him as far away from her as possible? That seems a little bit insane. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, they sent him to my house. Wow. Which I'm not going to turn down time with my son. No doubt. But then the, he would sit there and there on his phone and FaceTime. Last time I think he FaceTime with Faith, it was like, for two hours. Wow. That's okay. Okay. Real quick, let's continue. Nicole B, appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Yay to the subs. Um, and of course, hey guys, real quick, shameless plug, but please be sure to hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Plug that. You know, putting my son in diapers, that's shameless. Yeah. That's that, shameful. Yes. Me ex explaining that something that has happened that has changed his life and he's not getting the help that he needs brings it to more of awareness, not just for him, but for everybody else that's a victim. 
So why you sit there and want to sit there and say stuff about my son? Why don't you let somebody violate you and then find out what happens when you don't get the correct therapy so mm. that you can go back to civilization and be part of society and not be part of the problem? Can we talk don't. about that? Can we talk about the diapers real quick? Sure. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. What's up with the diapers? Can you put it down? Because I've heard that many different times in many different uh, comments and, and, and chat forms and all that. Can you just ex explain a little bit about this diaper situation? Um, he was having accidents at school. And... Chris got tired of Katie taking clothes to him to change clothes, so he made him wear a pull-up. Mm. Which is actually one of those things that happens to children that are abused. Yes. Yes. He would come to my house. First thing he did when he came in, I was like, take those damn things off. Go take a shower. Put on some underwear and some comfy clothes. Because we're men. We wear. I'm surprised the school didn't pick up on that. I am surprised the school didn't pick up on that. You got me. So. Our boxers. We wear our boxer briefs. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not wearing pull-ups. And no accidents here. But when he would go over there, he would be wearing diapers. When he went, went over there, it got to the point where he was forced to bring a diaper over here. For when he left, he couldn't have underwear at their house. It's disgusting. Really? Chris didn't want him wearing underwear. Chris wanted to wear a pull-up. Chris got upset that I wouldn't enforce that at my house. What? My son doesn't need to be in a pull-up. My son needs to be treated better. Yeah. Accidents happen. No doubt. All right. Well, maybe months without an accident in my house. Real quick before we continue, I do want to give everybody a, a quick heads up. Please, guys, I have pinned it to the top at the very beginning of our conversation. It is Seth Rogers Cash App. I highly urge you guys. I beg you guys, please go over there, show him some support. It is tagged to the top of the chat as we speak right now. I see a gang of y'all in the chat. Please go support. He is literally out here trying to find Sebastian as we speak. He is not working right now. He could really use the help, really use the funds. So please, if you got a buck, five bucks, it doesn't matter. A little goes a very long way. Please go over to the top of the well, real talk. Misty, thank you so much. Seth, have you checked facilities who take in autistic individuals? It was said if KP or Katie Proudfoot put Sebastian in a place, HIPAA would stop them from telling anyone. I don't know anything about this subject, but what are your thoughts been, on that? I've actually been on it and uh I've had a couple people helping me out. Okay. So you are looking into those uh, into those kind of facilities, et cetera, just in case if he happened to stumble upon one of those organizations and one of those facilities, correct? That is correct. That's good. That's great. That's great news. I mean, this is a very confusing case because nothing makes sense. So None it's of it. not about outside the box per se but it's trying to look at the box from a 360 degree angle my son could be anywhere so any place he might be we're calling we're checking we're emailing pictures of him you know this is him 
Is he here? You know, the biological father is looking for him. If he is there, please call 911. If he's not, you're subject to kidnapping because the biological father hasn't given permission to submit him into any type of institutionalized plan means that you have to have both mother and biological father permission. Well. And if they have, when I find him as a, he's out of place and they don't give him to me when I find out, besides calling the police, they'll right. have a lawsuit against them for kidnapping and charges will be filed. So then honestly, what do you think, where do you think Sebastian is right now? Uh, honestly. Don't know, man. It's why I'm looking everywhere. It's why I'm looking, I'm, I'm tracking down all angles, any type of ideas. I listen to these podcasts afterwards and it's, I hear them. But most of the time I'm looking at chats. I'm looking at chats to see if anybody has an idea. It's the right question. All right. I made a point about that with Dolly on his thing. You're not asking the right question. You have to ask the right question. So I'm looking at all these questions, hoping that I will come across one that I haven't already asked myself. I write it down and I do it. Right. Well, then here's a question. Are there specific areas the searchers are being harassed or anywhere? If it is specific, are they being tracked? If uh, it could lead to poten- uh, to a potential location, uh, thank you and God bless you. And, of course, I stand with Seth and Sebastian Strong. Uh, is there any specific locations that maybe these lurkers, these people that are standing around or you know driving around and following these volunteers, is there any place in particular where traffic is high with these stalkers, for lack of a better Anderson term? Say again? Andersonville. Andersonville. Just Look, now, I don't know how to this is, but I heard something the other day that apparently CP was seen taking down flyers. Right, now, being a CP is in where? Mississippi? Three hours away? Whatever. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's mother and stepfather are or even melissa his sister you got know I me mean? someone is taking down the flyers that they are putting up because they put the flyers up and then three days later seth is having to send a group of people back out to that area to put flyers up again because they've been took down Just Hendersonville. Okay. Okay. I haven't seen the flyers ripped down over in Bellevue. I didn't, and I'll tell you some of the places I've been. Bellevue, I've been all the way over there on that side. You know, I'll go check and make sure the flyers are there, but I've got people going to the same places three days later because all the flyers are gone. So you keep circling just, back. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, we do. We keep circling back. You know, I believe he's alive. If he's not hidden somewhere or in some camp that we haven't found yet, you know, why do people want to keep tearing down my flyers? No why doubt. Don't they, the questions that I have, you know, why don't you want me to, to find my son? I think that's the reason why I think that's the ongoing question that we all are asking the same thing. I mean, why are these people following your volunteers, following you around? Why is it, why are flyers being ripped down? You've talked to 5 you've talked to law enforcement. So why hasn't law enforcement actually gotten off their butts and done something about these people that are lurking in the background? And I get it that, you know, they may not be breaking any specific laws, but at the same time, if they're tearing things down and, and intimidating people, that's a big problem, especially when it comes to this search. It's intimidating people enough for them not to show up 
if that makes any sense. Cajun Navy left because of these threats that were they were getting. And apparently yep. Nancy Nancy Grace was one of the people that actually heard the these phone calls, these threats to the Cajun Navy. I mean, that says a lot. So why isn't law enforcement doing everything they can to protect the people that are out here putting in the much needed time to find Sebastian? Maybe you should ask them during the next press conference. I should. <laughs> Whenever that press conference is going to be, that's what if I'd like open. to know. If it's open to the, to the public, indeed. If it is indeed, right? Uh, real quick, this is important for you, for you too, okay, so that you can keep moving out here. Is there a Venmo? Do you have a Venmo? I don't. Okay. Sure, I don't even have the cash app. The cash app is actually his godmom. Oh, okay. Well, if you do talk to godmom and she has a Venmo, uh, please let us know. And then we will make sure that that Venmo is out here for everybody to see as well. Because there's there's a lot of people that want to support as much as, uh, as, much as they can. Okay? And um, I appreciate it. Of course, of course. You know, we, we want to hold it down for you, bro. We want to hold it down for you, brother, all day long, okay? Because this is this whole thing ain't right. This whole thing is not right. And we want justice. We're going to have to have a block party when we find him, right? Absolutely. You know, we're going we gonna to meet in the face-to-face. -face. We're going to pop some champagne. We're going to drink some beers. We're going to have a great time. On God, we're going to see each other. And we're going we're gonna to have a blast. It's going to be all the people, everybody, just on TikTok, uh, T-Rev, everybody that's been involved in trying to get this word out here, get this story out here, this case out here. We're all going to be there celebrating with you when he is found. And I do feel that it's, it's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. It's coming soon. I just wish it would just happen right now. But the people that I feel, I mean, this is just me, but the people that I feel that know everything prophets. And I wonder why, and I'm wondering when that's going to happen when they actually speak the truth. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Say, so just remember, everybody's innocent until proven guilty, no matter what their demeanor or behavioral language True. state because if that was the case there'd be a lot of guilty people out here which there probably is i i'm hoping you know what honestly i'm hoping as well honestly i really am hoping as well um real quick guys just so you know i am putting i'm re i'm putting back in the gofundme okay fund me link all right, I'm going to share you guys as well really quick so you guys can see that, okay? Because I think you guys need to see this. All right, share the love if you can. Don't, don't worry, I will make sure that the GoFundMe link is pinned to the top of the uh, comment section down below at the end of this show, okay? For those of y'all who are, because the chat is blazing. I was like, I'm just telling you what I saw. Don't, don't beat the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it so the uh so it will be at the rudder still at 126 River Road, Hendersonville, 37. I feel like they're soft in their softing their deaf pockets. I don't know what that means, but um, I don't know. I, uh, they didn't tell me any answers. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. I had all the answers, but, you know. Say that again. I'm sorry. Said I wish I had all the answers. Uh, I feel you. I'm with you on that all day long. Uh, I wish I had all the answers as well. Well. OK, also, um, I also understand somebody just said this, too, and it's a member. So thank you. But they said Darzilla just said. Uh, said
thing. So I, I as I said last time we talked, so I'm going to say it again till I'm blue in the face. I just strongly recommend you getting the rest that you rightfully deserve. You, you know, rest that arm, rest that shoulder, that back. Um, you know, let it do what it needs to do. I know it's stressful times and there's a lot of BS and a lot of drama circling, circulating around your son's disappearance. Um, but you can't be fully functional if you're half asleep out here, right? Sleep is not something I get. I get that. I get that. But I just say, please oh, try. We know, you, we know you get sleep. Oh, me? No, we know you get sleep like 10 or 12 hours a day. I mean, man, I wish I got a, I got an eight. I got an eight month old. So, so no, not really. Not really. But at the same well, time, just, just running on adrenaline, man. You know what I mean? But I'm definitely getting more sleep than you. That is definitely for sure. Okay. So. Rub it in. <laughs> Rub it in. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just want you to take care of yourself. Long story I'm, short. Okay. I would be here for Sebastian for a long time anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I know that there's, we just talked through a lot of stuff and I, and I hope that some of this was cleared up or at least a good portion of it. Cause I know that when you had that interview, that really shocked the hell. Out. Oh, just fast forward again. Who does that? You know, somebody asked me a question. Shoot. They sat there and they, I mean, pretty sure they were just being the devil's advocate. But they looked at me and they said, what don't you search for? Mm. What, what don't you search for? You don't search for something that's not lost. Ain't that the truth? Well, you have to have an attachment to it in order for it to be lost. Mm-hmm. And the in isn't it interesting how this all unfolds and how things go the way it's been going down, at least with this particular case? Interesting, huh? It's interesting. To say the least. Disgusting, if you ask me. Yeah. Like I said, my brother, I'm I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, because I know you have a big place in your heart for your son. And uh again, we need to bring him home. We uh, correction, we need him to go back to you long story short. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that we actually are able to do that regardless of the drama, regardless of the salaciousness, regardless of all that stuff. What matters the most right now is being able to find a way to get him back into your arms because it seems like that's, that was his safe place, and that was his happy place. Yep. The sooner the better. I'm praying for you, my brother. I, I really, really am. I'm praying for everybody. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go so you can get some proper rest. You know? Well, I just finished there now, but I just wanted to say that it, from where I started it, because that's literally where I finished it last night. And I think I missed it, one of the questions, and one of the questions was, 
have you checked the Amish uh, people, the Amish or group, and the African, uh, Indian American, or something like that? And he hasn't. So we've got to get on to that now. Because they could have him in anything like that, couldn't they? But I think, if anything, they've put him into some care facility. They've put him anywhere. They've put him into a care facility. And if they have, like he said, if they don't tell the TBI and the police they have him, then, and they find out, he will have them for kidnapping. So, yeah, I don't know how many of you seen this. All right, but we're going to play this. This was from last night. Because it was supposed to be tonight, but because of the weather forecast, they brought it forward to last night. Um. I believe this is the fourth or fifth, maybe sixth vigil we've done for Sebastian and every single one of you that have come out there, every single one. On behalf of myself, Seth, and his family, we appreciate you. Um, but I'm going to hand it over to Sheila and Shalon. Shalon sorry, I'm going to hand it over to Shalon. She's going to open us up in a word of prayer. So if everyone will bow their heads, we'll get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing us all here together for Sebastian. Lord God, we're just asking you now, Lord God, that you put your We just thank you for his parents, Lord. We thank God that all they want is for Sebastian to come home. God, we ask that you wrap your arms around them. God, we ask that you strengthen them. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for the unity of this community. God, you said that what's where we bind on earth is bound in heaven. So God, right now, Lord God, together we bind the spirit of confusion and we lose peace and unity. Father, we pray, God, now that you will bless the law enforcement, oh God. Give them discernment, Lord. Father, we ask that you lead them, Lord God. Give them wisdom, Lord God, on where Sebastian is, oh God. We thank you for every volunteer. We thank you, Lord God, for every community leader that has come out today. We thank you, Lord God, because Sumner County is united. We are one, Lord God, and we believe and we decree and declare that Sebastian will come home safe and unharmed. So we thank you, we glorify you, we bless you, and if everyone can just clap your hands for the Lord and just say amen. 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 There you go. Amen. So I guess since I'm up here, um, I'll go ahead and say what I wanted to say. Um, this case has really meant a lot to me. Um, I have, from the first week, you know, we all hope that whenever a missing child or a missing person of that matter goes missing, you hope that they find them within the day or within the hours or within <coughs> however much time, as quickly as possible. And whenever they didn't find Sebastian within after the second, third day, it really hit my heart. Um, on day four, I had worked all day and I was like, this is starting to really hit home for me. And I decided I'd go out and search. And I did that Thursday on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, I did that on Friday. And ever since then, I just it has set such a heavy burden in my heart for this child, for Seth, for his family, that I'm so dedicated to him. I'm dedicated to doing whatever
whatever I can to help. It's okay, Jay. Phelps, cut back for that lad. To help bring him home. It was his wife to bring it home. Because this man walking up. I want to thank everybody that showed up. My heart is out there somewhere. With y'all's help, with everybody keeping their eyes open, your heads up. We'll find my son. You guys are Sebastian's army. We will find him. We will find him alive. We will find him well. That is all it is. God will. Because I will never stop. I just want to never speak. Stop. I just want to speak on this man right here. <clears throat> he is the most dedicated individual I've ever met in my life. You know your mom's right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> but and that's your grandma. That is. But don't forget that too. <laughs> From the prayer vigil at Beach High School a few weeks ago, I, I met him. And we connected ever since. And then I kick in. Yeah. So. <laughs> but we've been um, we've been really working closely together, doing whatever we can, searching for far and wide, trying to find Sebastian. And I cannot credit Seth Rogers enough. He is the most hardworking individual I have ever met in my life. I said in the Fox 17 interview, I won't give up because this man's broken. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't bring my shoulder into that. Yeah. But I said in an interview, this man is broken. He is. He needs a son back. I said that as well. But I reiterate to everybody out here, please do not give up. Do not let this turn cold. He is out there and we will find him. Yes. And I won't give up until I until we do. I know he won't give up until we do. And I hope that everybody out here will not give up until we find Sebastian. Because he's alive and well, and he's going to come back home to his family, and the world is going to be a happy, happy place. No, I will be. That's it. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate y'all showing up. A lot of you don't know my son, but what you do know about my son has come from my own lips, from my own heart. And I appreciate y'all. I really do. Thank you. When I hear Seth talk about his son, Sebastian, it might, I sometimes have to stop and think, is he talking about Sebastian or my grandson? You know what I mean? Because the things his son does are the sort of things my grandson does. There was going to be um, there was going to be people. I just wanted about. to get up here and thank the rudder. I mean the rudder. Yes, yes, yes. They let us be out here in this parking lot every single day until he comes home. Sorry. <laughs> um, Blame it on the kids. <laughs> you. Um, it's it's really really awesome that they let us be out here every day. Um, they haven't cap put a cap on our time here. Um, I wanted to say that if anybody would like to come up and write a little note to Sebastian, um, we have some index cards you can write that on. We are going to put those in a scrapbook because we intend to give it to them. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. So definitely help yourself to a ribbon if you don't already have one and there's no cards up here. Um, flyers. And flyers, flyers, of course. There are flyers here. Lots of them and there's a lot more. So if anybody needs any and they'd like to place them anywhere, if you're going on vacation, take them with you. Good idea. Yeah. 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 We've them passed them out of the... the Why'd well, you enlarge the well, you didn't up enlarge the reader. That's about the size it really is. Karen. Actually, she is. Oh, my. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. Thank you. Um, 
My name is Don Schmidt. I'm the Sumner County Commissioner for District 18. Um, when Sebastian was first reported missing, I went down to the command center on Long Hollow Pike and took a tour inside there to get an inside look at what was going on. And I want the community to know something because I, I, I get there's a lot of speculation out there. It's human nature. And I don't blame anyone one way or the other for that. But our law enforcement, our sheriff's department, I spoke with, those men and women, I mean, you could just see it on their faces. They want Sebastian home. They are working round the clock. I have, if this was my kid, Lord willing, these are the men and women I would want on my team looking for my son. But Paul Katie and Questinger, and Questinger hard. Paul Chrissy and question him hard. Because one of them or both of them know something. Our emergency management has done a, a great job. He's, uh, Mr. Widener has taken uh, one of the news agencies on a tour and just to show them what they're doing. They've been totally upfront with everybody. Um, but you know, the first, the Monday that we had a commission meeting, you know, I, I remember hearing our mayor say he had to return to the command center, um, you know, to get updates and briefed. And I thought to myself as a parent, I'm thinking maybe this kid just wandered off somewhere. I'm sitting yeah. at my, my workstation on the floor of the commission yeah. that night thinking, maybe just wonder, I didn't know what to think. All I knew to do is pray and just keep uh, the algorithms in social media going. And that means sharing his flyer, his picture. I, it may sound redundant to some folks. I get it to do this every day, but I, that's my commitment. I'm gonna share it every day. I'm gonna keep it going. I'm gonna talk to people. Um, I've asked my fellow commissioners to please keep it in their minds and, you know, keep, keep spreading the word uh, that, you know, our last commission meeting we had and, you know, they're all attentive to this. We're all, like you said, we're all a community. We can all have differences of opinion, but we're all coming together because we could disagree on a lot of issues out there. But when it comes to a child, that's something that we all, no matter where we stand on anything, we all come together. This is a kid. I'm not going to lose hope. I'm not going to stop praying. I've said to people, do not allow your mind to steer you to the worst case scenario. I get it. I'm a dad. I mean, it, your mind does that. I, I totally understand that. But please keep hope up. Keep praying. Uh, keep talking to your neighbors. Keep spreading those flyers out. You know, a lot of people don't watch the news. I get it. You know, sometimes we just don't want to see bad stuff. But, you know, if those people aren't watching the news, then they're not aware of maybe what's going on. Just give them a flyer, show them a picture, keep the algorithms going. Uh, I'm going to stand committed to keep sharing this young kid's uh, picture and flyer until he's brought home. And I have faith. I believe in God and I have faith in him that he's going to bring this kid back. And we're not going to stop working until that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that actually knew Sebastian or have a story about Sebastian that you would like to share? Just something positive with so much negativity that's going on on social media. This is why we want to bring the community together, together because we are one and our goal is Sebastian, nothing else. And so we want to speak positive things about Sebastian. So I don't know if any family member want, before I close in prayer, would like to say anything, grandma, anybody talk about baby. All right. This is Sebastian's grandmother and grandfather. That's what grandmama said. That's right. We share brown stories. Okay. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Sebastian and I had a very special relationship. 
Bob. Remember the time him playing with the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> he left our Boston. So that's why we have him with us today. Aww. This is our second trip back from San Antonio since we went missing. Um, we have flyers from here to the Mexico border. Prayers from East Coast to West Coast and North to South. He loved to talk about plants with me. He loved to talk about animals with oh. me. He loved to go fishing. And he would say, you know, Mimo, that's our favorite sport, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. We took him out in the golf fishing in wow. Texas. And I know. Because I'm a better fisherman. <laughs> no. He was a special little boy. He is a special little boy. And after his dad and his mom, I was the third person to ever hold him. And then, yeah, Seth took him from me. And I was there when he was born. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. I was there the whole time. Katie was in labor. <laughs> Seven days late. Seven days late. Okay. Yeah, he. Uh, just waiting on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was born on my on his Pat Pat's birthday and, and his uncle Aww, David's birthday. Oh, my triple sevens. Yeah, the triple sevens. <laughs> but we thank everybody for being here and for your prayers and for putting forth the effort to. Try to find him. This is our second trip up from Texas. Uh, Just all the negativity that's yes. going around needs to stop. Mm -hmm. It needs to stop. The negativity is not going to bring my son back. No, mm -mm. And you know, it's it's it it just needs to stop. And these, you know, the YouTubers, meet social media, okay. But if it, you're it's about it, what you're doing with it. Yes. Yeah. All right. If you're going to be positive, be positive. If you're going to be negative, you're not welcome. If you're going to get out here and and pound the ground and look for him without your GoPro or whatever on, you're going to be out here doing what needs to be done to bring our grandson home. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. it. But if you're and out there you. just making money, stay away. <laughs> stay away. About yeah. My grandson's not quick to make it. Thank you all. Thank you. This is Bob Terry. Yes, it is. I just dropped my. Anyone else? Oh, thank you. Hey. Hey. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm not going to go. What did, what did you do to celebrate when you heard you were fixing your hair? He's right there. <laughs> I'm here, baby. Huh? Oh, my dad was a full in here. Close seven. Close seven. Close seven. Close seven. Close seven. Pearl Harbor Day.
God, we pray again for our law enforcement, Lord God. Lord, we know their bodies are tired, Lord God. We know they've done a lot of searching, dear Lord. We ask, God, that you keep them protected day in and day out so that they can return to their families, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God. We pray healing upon Seth, Lord God, right now from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord God. We bless you. You are wonderful. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are mighty. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we will not doubt, Lord God. We believe that Sebastian will return home safe. We thank you for the media, Lord God, that is out here. We thank you that the media that is here that has given coverage, Lord God, we thank you that they've taken their time out, oh God, through every prayer visual, through every time that we volunteer. So God, we ask that you give them a special blessing as well. We ask that you protect the media as well, oh God. And we ask, Lord God, this day, Lord God, that you put your seal of blessings upon us. We thank you. We love you. And in Jesus' name, can we all say amen. 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 God, it was God. What the cook? Oh, I'll try to pay. Exactly. The only people there was Seth's mother and father. There was no Katie, there was no Chris, there was none of his parents, family there, no one. That was informed. Chris did tell him. And he got a text back saying they wouldn't be coming or whatever. I can't remember what he said, but he got a text back saying they wouldn't be coming. Exactly. A vigil is for all family members. All. That's the father's family. Fake channel. Bye. Bye, Rapper. It's like no fake channel. Right? And it's for everyone. Now, okay, Katie and Chris might not be in Hendersonville. They are wherever they are. But what about his parents? Sebastian's other grandparents. What about his aunt? Why couldn't they go? Right? Thank you, Shelley. They are a beautiful family, and I feel so bad for them. I feel really bad for them. So. I want to show you now. Uh, uh, where were you? Um, that is part one of the drive home. You need to watch these for, from JLR. It tells you, um, there's another one. I don't know if he's released that one yet, but there are three parts part one, and they all start from the Texas Road House. And it takes you one way the first time, then it'll take you, and the second one it took us a different route. And it said there is a third route that you could take, and that one I've got to see yet. Right? Now, this one here. This is what I was talking about earlier. 
right? This is what I was talking about It was good first to the police. But someone put on my Facebook, one of the Facebook pages, don't report it to JLR, report it to the police. Well, they did. They did. So, let's listen. Good morning, everyone. Reporting from Jackson, Tennessee. Come on in, everyone. We're going to talk about the Sebastian Rogers case. Uh, boots on the ground. Sebastian Rogers is still missing. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, 15-year-old boy with autism. Hendersonville, Tennessee, Sumner County. Uh, the mother of Sebastian, Katie Proudfoot, and the stepfather, Christopher Proudfoot reported Sebastian missing during the early morning hours of February 26, 2024. I am at the Speedway in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm going to show you right here. There's a sign right here. Just kind of show you the area what's going on. Because we received it the last time I was here. It's right here, all, all beginning of 4, 412 and 70. I 40 is right over there. This is a speedway right off of I 40 in Jackson. It is act. It is exit 87. It is exit 87. I want to talk about the speed here and what's going on. So what? Couple last time we were here. When we were here the last time, out here boots on the ground. Uh, two weeks ago, it was pouring down rain out here. By the way, we received the tip. Uh, from an individual, right? They they left a, a, a tip on JLR Investigates. And I'm going to read to you the tip. And what this individual is claiming is during the early morning hours of uh, February 26, saw a dark pickup truck in the in, at here at the speedway here, and they think it was Sebastian in the front, and they listed a time and gave some details to us, right? So we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. The timing really does make sense considering at the time, two weeks ago, we were hearing a lot about those flights and during the early morning hour. And the time, made, we definitely forwarded the information to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and they responded and said, receive, thank you. So after we did that, after we did that, the last time we were here, we actually went here and we went in in, we we went a day we went a day later after giving law enforcement the tip right we came here parked went in and asked authority or asked the uh you know the manager there and whoever was working there if they knew anything about this uh has authorities come and review any surveillance footage or uh you know you know anything anything do you know anything about sebastian being here that they knew nothing they knew nothing so we're like okay okay well, maybe it takes law enforcement time to go through all the tips they're getting because they get so many tips when it comes to these cases. You guys know that sometimes with these big cases, they receive thousands and thousands of tips and it just takes them a while to go through. Well, just came here again today, just went in there before I did this live and asked the employees there, have a, authorities coming in, in here in reference to uh, Sebastian Rogers or uh, reviewed any of footage or Well, actually... They said the other night in that press release that they've only received about, they, they had received about 350, 400 tips. That isn't a lot compared to some cases I've heard the seen. So it's not in the thousands. Surveillance, and they said no. They said no. So authorities, my... I'm not even be entertaining this tip, all. but I want to read and give you some information We're corresponding with this individual, and it does make a lot of sense considering that Sebastian is still missing and no trace of some, the home there, right? So this person, I'm going to read you this email. I'm going to read you contents of the email, and I was re responding back and forth with this individual, right? Um. I, I believe say they got receipts that in here. Um, they also said they themselves have set the tip into uh, the for the authorities. 
This is what this individual said to me. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. I tried to tell law enforcement, but no one called. It was coming from Mississippi on the 26th, around 5.30 a.m. in the morning. And we stopped off at the gas station. Hi. How are you? Give me one second. Hold on. Somebody wants to talk. All right. I'll be right back. It took the kind of guy here. All right. Now, it's nothing for her, her mum. I just checked on TBI Facebook page. And I believe, oh no, I'll put it up. Can you see your investigation? As you can see, hold on. All right, got some new information. Got some new information, she says. Got some new information. Well, as you can see, hold on, I'm just going to show you this. The last time TBI put anything up about Sebastian was the 30th of March. I'm, I'm from the UK, so I can't really say too much about TBI. I can only tell you what I think from what I've seen in their past with children go, who's gone missing right and i just find when there's a complex case look uh, look at summer wang that was a very complex case still is a complex case right however they've not found her this is a complex case TBI haven't found this one. Don't know if they will. I hope they do. But if he is found, I can't see it being TBI finding him. I can see it being one of these steps PIs tracking him down if he's alive. If he's alive and in some care facility somewhere. Or one of the searchers, one of the volunteer groups finding him. I cannot see it being TBI or the sheriff's department. Because the other day they came out in, in a show of force, right? And did that search for two days. Now that would cost a lot of money. A lot of money to organise, to go about doing the business and everything, right? So what made them go over that area again? Did they get a tip off? Well, I can understand the police, law enforcement, not telling us everything. Because if they are building a case, they don't want to tip anyone off. Right? So... Have they been getting tips? And that is why they went out on that two day search again. Up by the school, they were searching some grassland and whatever, around by the school, and also the tree, tree line and that bushy area as you come out of there, out of that uh, housing complex onto the main road, there's that big forest area. They were searching there, right? So, was the tip offs? We don't know. But they're not going to do it. Oh, we're just doing this to cover our backs because it costs money to do all those searches. But I just think TBI, when they have a complex case, they don't know how to deal with it. They don't. From what I know, Kate's family is on the wrong side of the law. Yeah, her mum is. Her mum is on house arrest. 
Jilling, I heard that her mum was in prison. <laughs> I heard the mum was in prison. No, I wouldn't want to go missing in Tennessee either, Jillian. I really wouldn't. But it's like this one guy who's out there searching. He's got his dog with him. He's a diver, but he's also got a dog. So he does land searches. And he's this dog has been trained for, uh, like he said, he could send his, his dog could go, say, a mile away, right? And his dog would track her, right? But his dog is more tra uh, trained for decom, for tracking decomp decomposition, right? However you want to put that. And he doesn't have him on a lead. He's really, I watched him the other day. We had it on here last night, showing you bits of it. And he's really, really well trained, this dog. So it's just a shame that TB, I, I have no faith in TBI, but I have no, there's some law enforcement uh, people over here, it's to certain parts of the UK, I have no faith in, I really don't, but there's some parts of the UK where the police are exceptional. So it all depends where you live, as depends as to whether you gotta get a good police force or a crappy one. So anyway, where was I? There. Let's get back. Apparently, they may might be looking into this. They might be looking into this tip. But let me go back to what I was sharing with you guys maybe they're looking into this okay okay maybe they're looking into this so let me continue the 26 5 30 in the morning we stopped a gas off of a gas station in jackson tennessee and went inside to pay when i came out there was a big truck i believe it was a black, black or dark blue and there was a young man in the passenger seat that looked a lot like this young boy that is missing so someone needs to go to the gas station and get them to pull the video we was at pump number eight so it, it will be the pump next to us on the left i send you over everything if you like so response response to this email i do believe he was wearing dark glasses i want to say they was in dark in color. Give me a minute and I will send you the gas station information. It's right off of I-40. And if I remember correctly, he looked like he was sleeping. Like I said, I can't 100% swear it was him, but he did look like him. Exit 87 Speedway and my bank record said the time was 5.48 a.m., on the 26th, 5.48 a.m. Well, right, now I'll tell you something, right? The mother and the stepfather could have put him into some facility, right? Because, and perhaps he didn't know where he was going. Perhaps he didn't know they were putting him into this facility until he got there, right? Because I used to work with the elderly. And there's this one lady I used to go to, a lovely old lady, right? And you just had to play along with her. Like one day she was sitting on the floor and the staff could not get her up off the floor. So they said, would I go in and have a chat with her? And I said, but she's not on my books today. I'm not due to go to see her. I said, please, just see if you can get her up off the floor for us. So I've gone in, and I said, what are you doing down there? And you know what she said? She said, I'm in, I'm praying. I'm in this church. I'm in the, 
the oil thing, right? And I'm praying. I went, okay. So I'm listening out on the floor with her. And I said, and she was saying this little prayer, I can't remember what it was. And I said, I'll be sick. I'm going to sing a song now. And she said, yes, I will. We're going to be singing a song in a minute. So I said, but why don't we stand up? Over there by the comfy chair. So then if you want to sit down, you can. And you know what? She stood up and she sat down on the sofa. The staff couldn't believe it because I literally did some role playing with her. Right? Now, how did I know? And then it came to the point where the family decided to put her into this other uh, council care facility, right? Now, I went to one of these council care facilities once to visit an old client I used to go to. And it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Cold. Nothing about it being warm and cosy. It was just cold looking. Anyway, when I got there that night, I was due to see this little woman and they told me what was going on. Right? I went, okay. Right? And then, but you can't say nothing to her. I went, pardon? Said, you can't tell her she, she's going there. I went, you're telling me she's been moved from here to a council care facility. Right? We're locked down 24-7. Because where she was, she could get up and walk out the door. Right? And she used to. And they find her every time at the cemetery. At the cemetery. Right? So they decided to put her into this 24-hour lockdown facility. Where she wouldn't be able to get out. And... I said, so I can't even say goodbye to her. They went, no. I had to go in there, see to this lady, right? And when I left, I, I had to make out I'd see her again. I said, see you next week, sweetheart. You know what I mean? It broke my heart. I was in tears as I walked out that building. Because I couldn't say goodbye to her. Right? And now, for all we know, they've probably got him in a facility where it's a 24-hour lockdown, where we can't get out. We don't know. But if they have, like the father said in that Pascal interview, if they have got him, they need to report it to the police or TBI. Because if they find out he is there and they don't report it, he'll have them for kidnapping. Why reporting missing, Gillian? Because if they put him into this care facility, right? The care facility are by law not obliged to tell him he's there, right? By law. And for they know, the mother. And Chris have signed the paperwork. Yeah? So before they know it's legit. But they've had to report him missing because of Seth. Because Seth, you were phone up on the Monday night when he got home from school. He phoned him on the Monday night just to see how school went that day and things like that. So that is one, and I think the reason I would put him into something like that is because he had a court case coming up with some custody hearing of his daughter, which he didn't get. He didn't get it, right? And um, so. It's their way of saying, oh, well, it's all right. Um, Sebastian has been put into, right, is with a, in a care facility. Now, all these 
um, casework on his job on his uh, uh, his child related cases are locked. They cannot, they will not release any information being said in court about these child case, his daughter's case. He's had it all locked down. So even the judge can't say what was said in that court hearing. So they can say, yes, we'd like to place him into a facility because he's regressed so much, he's, this is happening and whatever. So, you know what I mean? So even the judge couldn't say anything because it's all been locked down. Chris did this within the first week of Seth, uh, Sebastian being reported missing because people was getting it. Well, JLR was snooping around and was getting information on the case. So we had all that locked down so nothing could be released. So they could go to, you could go and do that course. We've had to put Sebastian into a 24 hour care system and all this stuff. The judge can't say nothing. The child services can't say nothing because everything has been locked down. Nothing can come out of that, those court hearings. So then he. Hopefully, he's hoping that he'd win custody of his daughter. Right? And don't forget, this is in a different state as well. This is in New Mexico, this court hearing, I believe. So would they know about Sebastian going missing up there? It's hard to say. But that's a possibility. It's just a possibility. It's just another bit of information we're throwing out there because we're not getting nothing given to us. Did you see the video of Seth's mum saying someone said, someone said, they said something? No, but I heard about it. I did hear about that. I did mention it earlier. At the beginning, I said I wasn't sure if it's true or not, but I'd heard that Chris had been seen pulling down the flyers. And he shouted, you will never find him. Kate, Kate is also taking the posters off. Yes, just took that one off her car, hasn't she? They don't care. They don't care because they know where Sebastian is. Now, I hope Seth has sent that video to the Sheriff's Department and to TBR. Because it's sabotaging an investigation. It's sabotaging a search for a child. But I believe they know whether he's with us or not, they know something. I'd like to believe they have to just put him into an institution. You know what I mean? I'd like to believe that they've done that. Because at least then, if they've done that, he's somewhere safe, he's dry, he's getting fed, and he's getting his medication. Right? But I wouldn't like to think that he's out there somewhere in the cold. I'll just... Definitely one one. Yes, he does. Yeah. And that's why Seth's got his PI or PIs looking into these institutions and phoning them up and taking the flyers to them, handing them out and saying, have you seen this lad? Because his bio father is looking for him. You know what I mean? So 
So if he is doing anything like that, they will find him. And I just hope that they find him alive and I hope he gets a lawyer for himself and for Sebastian. Right? Because when Sebastian is found, he's going into child services straight away. Right? He won't be going back to his mum or stepdad and he won't be going to his dad either until they can clear it all up. So if he gets Seth, uh, Sebastian um, an attorney, at least that attorney then can speak for Sebastian. Right? And then, not only that, by getting himself an attorney, that attorney can help him go through all the rigmarole of what's going on. Help him get through all this, you know what I mean? I know they cost money, but... I would freaking help. I really would. So... But no, um, I definitely believe he's in some sort of institution or something. Because there's no sign of him. Nothing. You know what I mean? No footprints. Anywhere. You've got divers go. Well, I'm going to show you this dive now. Right? And I've got to get rid of this first. Because that's nothing wrong now. I just told that the police, the law enforcement, did act on that information. Right. Um, let's go to this first, and then I can go back tomorrow. Right, now this is not divers. And I will fast, I'll jump a bit at the beginning because there isn't much going on at the very beginning. Well, I'll start here. I'll leave it here and I'll start here. Because at the beginning, there isn't much going on. Right? But there is actually three of us in water. It was. Their name is Trouble. It was $9.99. Huh? Look at the water though, they're having to search him. That's just pure mud. You know what I mean? So even when they're under the water, they're having to feel. I should imagine they're having to feel with their hands. Like I'll go back a bit and you'll see this one diver before he actually gets in the water. Right here. Watch this one diver. He's just going along the edge here. Nancy D said, CJ, take your boots off and get rope. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm taking the volume off because it's just chit chat. But you can see this guy here when she zooms, goes back around to him. That is actually feeling with his feet as he's going around. So he's having to feel with, where it's really shallow, where they can't dive. He's having to go along and feel with his feet. See, if he finds anything, then he picks it out and throws it to one side. I took the boat, these speaking off. Is it, all I wanted to show you really was what they're going through to search these ponds and rivers. It's just mud. As you can see, that as they're walking through, it's knocking the mud up. You can see it.
So I'll go a bit more. I'll put the volume on for you. Whipped. Okay, I don't I know I'm not that bad. Come on now. Oh, that's when you come in for a rope. You came in for a rope. Because it apparently where he's going would be really you see this guy's in the water now. I wouldn't get in there, that's all I gotta say. And the other guy is down there somewhere. There's the other guy back. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Oh, you're supposed to pull. <laughs> I would not like to be in that water. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh. I am not with Josh. Uh, He's keep. He's keeping you on your toes. <laughs> You see, the thing is, if they ever find him in a river, then I will tell you now, he was killed, unalive, sorry, I have to say that because the YouTube are very funny, unalive before he went in. Because Sebastian has been said by his father, is a good, strong swimmer. I don't think they found anything yet. Still going. I don't know. He's either very close or they've got him in some sort of insti institution. If he's very close, then I don't believe he's alive. He's on my bag and grab me some more weight. 
Um, I'm not sure about the only place. I think we're kind of just playing it by ear right now. The one they're searching yesterday. It's just pure because it's been drained. It was just pure mud. I think I seen somebody else put a super chat in there, but I couldn't I didn't catch the name. Now this North Diver, he only come to my attention when he did a, a YouTube about, uh, oh God, Riley Stones, right? He was down there with his group of people and he was in the water, right? And I got this boy and it's just to warm boats. There's a diver there. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a diver down there below. Right? And uh, UCA used it. Was filming him. Right? While in the water. And used it as their, as though it was one of their divers. And it wasn't. And he called UCA out on that. Open. Okay. Hi, Nancy. <coughs> That's what would be cooking ski. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> The flipper that's right there. I think it's right there. <laughs> the one dive has been right over here. All over here, that one. And the other guy has been all over that side. Thank you, Bowen Mama. Oh, where'd it go? AZ62 for that $10 super chat. My screen went dark on me for a second. I'm new to the whole live streaming thing, so if I don't exactly shout out what comment you guys are saying, I do apologize. You can't say they're not searching, can you? When they are literally dripping on the water and looking through mud. Just pure mud. <laughs> That's Max, uh, Rex or something. Is it Rex? I think it's Rex, the dog. It's all right, buddy. All right, let's just go a bit clever. I'll show you. It's getting a little better. <laughs> it is very murky. You wouldn't catch me in there. Mm -mm. They got more guts than I do. 
So that one's on a rope. You can see the rope for that one. And this one's on a rope. <laughs> Wonder if they made any turtle friends yet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think there's any fish in there though. There's too many turtles snacking on it. Fish? Yeah, we said turtle probably ate all the fish. If there was ever any. Ah, get off me. There's a bug. I think my brightness is all the way up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm on Trey's phone. I don't really know how to maneuver his. Very good. He has Android. I have an Apple phone. <laughs> mm. Jasmine, I will mention Discord to Trey and the guys. I'm not sure if that's something they've ever looked into. But I'll mention it. The drone is back. Actually, I don't think it ever left, but... <laughs> Yeah, the drone, they've got a drone going over them, and they don't know who it is. I think it might uh, be the police. What do you think? 70 degrees them, outside of the water? Let's put this drone to mute. In the water? I'm not quite sure. They did say it was kind of cold. They've got a drone that keeps going over them, and I think it might be something to do with the police. Perhaps them just keeping an eye on what they're doing. You know what I mean? Because they are divers. There's no one anyone getting hurt. Um, but I think it's disgusting how the mother and dad have been behaving. <coughs> <coughs> they won't do no more interviews. I'd be surprised if they did any more interviews because. They just don't know how to keep their mouth shut. They don't know how to open the mouth and tell the truth because everything that comes out of their mouth, mouth are lies, lies, BS. And even though I like to watch those interviews just to catch them out in the flipping lies, they get me so mad as well. This is a mother whose son has gone missing. Does she not care about her son? Like if I was a mother, I'd be out there with them and go, thank you for everything you're doing to find my son. Thank you. But oh no, she jumps in her car and toggles off down to Mississippi, is it? The... I don't understand them. But as someone said, the reason they're not looking is because they know where they are. He is. Right? And that first interview they ever did on like a news channel. She was really upset. But I showed a clip on that at the very beginning of that interview and she did a deepest oh god it's, it's what they call deepest delight it's where they give out this little smile when it's when there shouldn't be a smile if you know what i mean and she's got the tissue up at her face and as she turns around to chris you just catch that that smile and I think she thought the tissue is hiding that smile. Sorry, Katie. I caught you on that. Caught you. Right? 
that's the only thing I will go on when it comes to body language. Anything else, I'm like deception detective. He's brilliant. I go on the words they use, not how they react, how they act. Because anyone can put false tears on. Exactly. There's too many inconsistencies. And I think this is what got people annoyed, YouTubers annoyed the other week when the police did that uh, press release. Right? They say there's no foul play. Right? Uh, so there's no foul play. There's no sign of kidnapping, abduction. There's no sign of him walking away. Because there's no scent of him anywhere. So where the hell is he? And we've caught him on so many lies and inconsistencies on these interviews. And that's just, just plain boring YouTubers. But that's what we do every day. We watch interviews and we catch people out and what they say. Right? And... So to go on YouTube, if you're going to go on YouTube and lie, like he did with Nancy Grace, right, her link is in the description as well, right, he lied, bad fake lied to Nancy Grace, right? Now there's two people I know you don't lie to, two people I know on YouTube you do not lie to. And that's Nancy Grace and JLR. Because JLR will do the digging, which she has. And Nancy Grace will do the digging, which she has. You know what I mean? And then to say, oh, well, I told Nancy Grace that I was having to do. Uh, a polygraph by Lori Bosman, and that I'll do her polygraph with her after that one. I'd like to see her rebuttal on that. Because who am I going to believe? Nancy Grace or CP? Hmm, that's a hard one for me. Ooh, let me think. Oh, yeah, Nancy Grace. She's got no reason to lie. She's out for the facts, and that's all she cares about are the facts. And if you lie to her about any of those facts, she's going to jump on you. They are compulsive liars. Can't wait to see her. No, I can't. I can't wait to see her, her come back on Chris. And she will. And as I said, she's one you don't want to appear. Look at JLR, right? When United Cage and Navy paid him off, right? Okay, UCN said they didn't want anyone doing live streams while out in the sea. Fair enough. Right? And JLR said, well, he'll just go on his own, do his own. Bit of searching, you know what I mean? So he wasn't going to join in on the searches, and then he gets this tip off as to where they were. So he goes there, and they come up, and they tell him to get off the land, private land. So eventually, he does leave, but he only goes up the road, sort of thing. And then they call the police on him. The police said you've done nothing wrong. In fact, two of the coppers, uh, law enforcement that was there, actually said they follow his lies, his show. Right? He'd done nothing wrong. But that peed JLR off, and that's when he went for them then. He started digging into UCA. And they didn't like it. And that's what Nancy was doing now. She'll dig into Chris. You know 
know what I mean? But to say, well, she didn't tell you that, did she? She didn't tell us that because she didn't know that. Because you have never told her that. You were doing an interview by the law enforcement. And are you going to do that? Uh, I wonder if you just do the polygraph with the law enforcement. I wonder. I did do something the other day that he refused to do one again. I don't know how true that is. Because I didn't hear it all month to a live and I just caught the ending of it. So I I don't know if that's true or not. But I can't help but lie. Everyone is at fault but them. Pure narcissists. Both of them. They've not said one good thing about Sebastian. Not one. And that Facebook with my messages. God. Right, I'll put it up again. Well, I'm sharing this quickly, right? And I'll read it again. And it was a post that someone put on Mysterious Disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, Hendersonville, Tennessee. I just watched a members-only interview with Terry Lee on YouTube in which Proudful stated that Sebastian liked, liked to pee and def 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 defecate in his pants. I don't think he liked to do it. You know what I mean? I don't think he liked to do it. <coughs> He's just been so scared now that his regressed back and we said as soon as we heard that, right, that he was untapped the pull-ups on, right? That's a sign of abuse when a child when that a child regresses back like that, it's a sign of abuse. And I'm a bit surprised the school didn't pick up on it. Well, I remember years ago, my son was at school when he was a little boy. He's a grown man now, he's got a family of his own. Right? And there was a time where I wasn't letting him out to play because we was in a flat and there's like a big car park at the back where the kids, children could play. Right? The car didn't come in fast. There wasn't many cars that coming in out of there anyway. I think it was like one, two cars at the most. Anyway, the kids used to go out there and play. But then there's an incident that happened. And um, a family had moved in below us. And they've been very nasty to my son. Very nasty. So. I just said, you know what, uh, so I said, rather than go out there and have to face that lot all the time, why can't you just stay in? And what we'll do, we'll go to the park ourselves. I'll take you to the park in the night time. Right? Well, there's some nights I couldn't do it because of the weather. Well, this one day at school, he got a pencil and he dabbed it in the back of this other lad, right? When they told me, I was horrified. I mean, what? What? And they said to me, they said, has anything changed at home for him to act out like that? As soon as they said it, I said, yes. They said, what's that? I said, I'm not letting him play out the back no more. 
right? Because there's a family that have moved in, which is doing nothing but having a go at him. And whenever I go down and have a go at the parents, it's just going to cause World War Three, right? I said, so to keep the peace, I just said to my son, you just came with me. And my daughter, she's, she never went out either. And occasionally he'd go round to his friend's house, who lived on the corner and played in his house. Or if the weather was nice enough, we'd go up to the park. But for about three or four days, we'd had some really bad weather, so we wasn't getting out. So all that pent up frustration he had, he wasn't able to release it in any way, like at the park or run it off or anything. And he lashed out at a child at school. So the school picked up on it very quickly because they said, this is not like your son to do this. You know what I mean? So they picked up on that. Now, I'm sure if my son was to, to have regressed and started having accidents at school, that's like, has anything changed at home? So I think. But I'm going back, well, it was about 60. I'm going back 20 plus years. So, I just don't think some schools actually take notice of what's happening with a child. It is a trauma response. If it were too regressing, he would need pull-ups at his dad. Yes. If it's a true regression, but obviously it wasn't. It was only when he was at home. And I suppose he probably thought, well, it's pointless me telling the teacher anything either because nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to get blamed again for telling lies. So he's going to school knowing that he needed to talk to someone but couldn't because he's just got in his head, no one believes me. Right? He's scared of waking up in the morning. He's scared. But say now, now this is the thing. Seth hasn't been there since the beginning of February. And I've got a good idea as to why he wasn't there. Because child services had said, while there's an open case, you can't be in the home. Right? So if it wasn't Seth issuing the corporal punishment, then who was he? It was his mum. It was his mum doing the corporal punishment discipline. So he's getting it either way, even if he thought, oh God, that's great, Chris won't be here no more. He's getting it off his mum then. You know what I mean? So he had no one. He couldn't. He, he couldn't tell his dad because he just thought, "Well, if I tell my dad, they just go, but not. They won't believe." The time I reported some to my school, they come out and they told me if I if I was to keep telling lies, I'll get into trouble. So this poor lad had no one to turn to. And I think if he did make it home that day, if he did, right, I think Katie's last day to upset uh, Sebastian because it's because of Sebastian that Seth can't be in the house. That's how she looks at him or was looking at him. Because of Sebastian, that her uh, husband, a true love, can't be in the house. So I think if he did make it back to that home, she's last out on Sebastian. Or 
Und die sind ja mit uns, wenn wir nicht mehr sind. Ich hatte ein bisschen Hektik, äh, quite a hectic day. Did you really need to sleep in Mexico in that night? Right? It's had a busy day. So as you can imagine, it'd be really tired anyway. But did you really need to have that sleeping medicine? I don't think he needed that sleeping medicine that night and he's had it. And because it's had such a busy day, he was already tired. So he's the more things in his body with the medicine it's just like overdosed it that could have happened. that was something that was said about Magdalene McCann she was very tired that day and she come back from a sailing trip with this children's group that was with but we believe her mother gave her some uh, medicine to help him sleep she didn't need that medicine. She was already tired. She didn't need that medicine. But we believe her mom gave us medicine and that's what killed her. So, I don't know. I don't know what to think no more. But it could be an overdose of the medicine. Or, they have put him into an institution somewhere. It's absolutely not. The first thing he told me, he said, TBI told me to get need one. Now he's saying TBI is going to do one. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, um, apparently, from what I understand, right, because he's been telling people different stories, he's been saying, yes, we've done a test. Right? Because someone asked him a question in one of the Facebook pages, have you both took a polygraph? And he's come back and said, yes, and we both passed. Right? Now, I don't think law enforcement can actually tell you whether you passed or not. I'm not sure. I don't know it works. Right? Unless you take a private one, then you get some piece of paper saying this is what they've done this is yes they passed you know what i mean but if it's done by the police i don't think they tell you whether you passed or not anyway so he said he took it one then he goes on nancy gray and said yeah but then i heard before that come out i heard that she took one and that he was angry with her for taking one right and then it come out that he said they both took a test. And then it come out that she took one, he hadn't. Then Nancy Grace arranged for him to have one. But then he said he told law enforcement he was doing this polygraph. I don't know why he had to tell law enforcement that. I don't know why he had to tell him that. But apparently he told law enforcement that he was taking a polygraph with Nancy Grace. And they said, they said, don't bother, we're going to do one anyway, right? So when they, when he told law enforcement this, apparently, law enforcement has turned around and said, don't bother, because we're going to do one on you anyway. We want you to come in and do a polygraph. And then he said that he told Nancy Gray that law enforcement was going to do a polygraph on him and that he would take a polygraph with her after that one. Right? So I want to see Nancy Grace rebuttal on that because she's going to rip him to bits. She will tear him to pieces. Anyway, as you can see, that water is murky, horrible. I would not want to be in that water at any time. But they're doing their due diligence, you know what I mean? They've been. I think, all in all, this went on for an hour and 12 minutes. So I'd say there's a good 60 minutes in there. Because as I said, the first 10 to 15 minutes, it was just them getting ready to go in the water. So, 
Anyway, I would just like to say thank you to those on Twitter that are here. Please show me some heart. Click that little heart. Show me some love. And thank you to everyone on YouTube, even those sitting in the back row, in the bushes. And I can assure you, where was it? Where is it? Is it probably not? I you know. Rapper, this is not a fake channel. So you know what? Bye. He won't be back on here. <laughs> so I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for being here, for supporting me by being here. You could be anywhere else, but you come on here to listen to me ramble on. So, so I'll be back on tomorrow, tomorrow night, again at 8 o'clock. I'm going to stick to the 8 o'clock time. Because at first I wasn't sure what was a good time to go live and what wasn't. But because I'm in the UK, I don't want to be coming on at 10 o'clock at night. Because that means I won't get to bed about 1am in the morning. By the time I've finished, and I've downloaded everything. So 8 o'clock is my time, which makes it about 5, 6 o'clock. You know, between two and three in the US. So thank you anyway for everyone being here with me. Thank you for all your comments. I really do appreciate seeing some comments coming up. And hold on. Please show me some love. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you feel you want to stay and hear more of this channel. And I'll see you all very soon. Good night.